Across Australia, archaeologists have been studying thousands of ancient stone arrangements created by Indigenous Australians. Researchers have long believed that some of these may have functioned as ancient compasses, with many of the stones oriented to cardinal points. For more, we're joined by Dr. Duane Harmaker, lecturer in Indigenous Astronomy at the University of New South Wales. Doctor, thanks for joining us this morning. Firstly, I find this story quite fascinating mm. because uh, we've all heard of Stonehenge uh, and uh, in my mind, this could be our very own version of that. Am I sort of correct in suggesting that? Yes, we have some stone arrangements that seem to align to the setting position of the sun at the solstices and equinoxes, which in many ways is similar to Stonehenge. All right, so tell us what is actually out there? What have you uncovered? Well, there are thousands of stone arrangements and we don't really know that much about them. But um, we're doing research in indigenous astronomy and we think that many of these arrangements may have astronomical symbolism. So we're going in and surveying them and finding that many of them do. So previously, uh, I guess many people would have overlooked this part of indigenous culture. We know a lot about, say, cave art and, and other aspects of indigenous culture in Australia. But uh, this seems to be something that, to me at least, seems like a, a new discovery. But how new is it? in terms of discovering it, that is. Well, we're sort of some of the first people who are going through looking at the astronomical symbolism in these stone arrangements. And they were used for a variety of reasons. Some of them were used as fish traps, some of them were used in ceremony. And we're finding that some of the ceremonial sites actually relate to the position of the Milky Way in the sky, which is quite interesting. And so what, how did you, so you've come across these, the actual physical arrangements, but how have you tried to sort of peel back the layers and work out what exactly was happening at the time? Well, surveying the arrangements is obviously the, the key thing, but we also have to work with many of the indigenous elders. Uh, a lot of the information that's come down over the, the years has been fragmented because of colonization. So there are places where we know a lot about the stone arrangements, the elders know a lot, and places where we don't know a whole lot. So we're trying to piece those back together. And there are a lot of historical documents that have been recorded you know, for the last almost 200 years that give us bits of information that we can utilize to help. Yes, in your research in this particular project, uh, have you looked overseas to see, uh, to check out any comparable arrangements or studies in, in, into existing structures like this? Yes, all humans around the world have made stone formations and many of them relate to astronomy. So by comparing some of them in other regions, we can look at them here and see if there are similarities. And we do find many of them. And so, um, are most Indigenous groups happy to, to work with you to sort of get a, a full historical picture or um, I imagine there has to be many cultural sensitivities when you're trying to investigate these arrangements? There are a lot of cultural sensitivities because many of the arrangements were ceremonial in nature and many of the ceremonies were secret and sacred. So, you know, you have to work with communities and build up a trust over time and work closely with them. And that's the key thing. We've been doing that quite successfully. Now, we've sort of boiled it down in the introduction that we gave you to ancient compasses. Is it as simple as that, or were there, was there a higher purpose or a greater purpose for these arrangements? It was much greater than that. Um, sometimes they're compared to compasses because a lot of the, the straight stone arrangements seem to align to north, south, east, west, but we don't really know why. Um, and we did some research recently and found that some of these sites were ceremonial sites and um, they were oriented north-south towards the Milky Way in about September, August. And that explained why some of them um, were aligned to the cardinal points, but in many cases we're not sure why yet. Mm. So what has it told you as you are finding out more about the alignments and the arrangements about the way in which Indigenous Australians lived? Well, in order to put these things north-south, east-west, or along the positions of the sun, you have to pay close attention to the sun and stars. You have to make careful measurements about that. So, you know, by, by seeing how these stone arrangements are aligned fairly accurately, we know that indigenous people have been using astronomy for a very long time because it's some insight into exactly how they did that. Now, in terms of pursuing this research, have you had to, say, uh, corroborate with space agencies such as NASA or, or other like organizations in order to, to help complete your research? No, we, we've mostly focused on the archaeological community and indigenous communities. We haven't really had to work too much in the, the space areas, but being an astronomer and some of my students and colleagues being astronomers, we kind of bring that expertise in, which is one of the reasons many of the archaeologists 
um, haven't really looked in this direction because they don't come from the strong backgrounds. Mm. So where are you looking at mainly? So obviously I'd imagine that these arrangements are across the country. Um, are there particular sites that you're looking at to find out more? Yes, we've been studying sites in New South Wales, um, which are all over, and South Southeast Queensland, especially near Brisbane. We've also been looking at some arrangements in Victoria. And there are quite a few down there that have I mean, the the Stonehenge type stone arrangement called Brady Ewing is actually not too far outside of Melbourne and that uh, denotes the setting position of the sun at the solstices and equinoxes. So really eastern and southeastern Australia is our focus at the moment. Okay, Dwayne, Hanukkah, we'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much for shedding light on this fascinating subject. Thank, thank you. you.